what's up y'all this is Hassan Nasser from iGeometry and as you can see I'm coming up with a cold uh, but I have to record this episode it's been a week already but excuse my voice you guys but I'll try my best maybe this episode will be shorter I have everything ready I have my pills Got my head hot drank. Let's see how it goes. I hope I don't collapse in the middle of the video. Right? If I did, call someone. Alright. Alright. <clears throat> Let's do it. So in the previous episode, we injected our pizza application with more functionality, right? I wanna go and check. We have a pizza system, guys. Finally, I'm gonna end world hunger. Yes, are we recording? Yes, we are. All right, it's taking a long time just because this is the first time things are not in cached yet, right? So you guys know about the operating system, this is like basic stuff. <clears throat> first time you open an operating system, yeah, operating system, God. First time you open a program, the, the Windows or the operating system has to go and fetch it from the hard drive. All right, mine is an SSD, so it's faster. But the first time you do that, there are a lot of DLLs and binaries and dependencies. And, I have to go look all over the places and once they are cached they go to a faster memory location you know in the memory which can be retrieved faster than that they go cached they are not dead in the hard drive okay this is not our topic all right sorry all right so this is what we did we added buttons oh we know labels oh nice that's what we did right Let's see. Yeah, it's disabled by default. We know how to do that. We are just create new pizza. Add cheese. Add onion. Yeah. And then you say calculate my price. And nice. Add more chicken portions. More chicken. I don't know who will add this much chicken portion to their pizza, but I don't. I don't judge people, right? So cheese. I would guess a lot of people add a lot of cheese, right? So yeah, yay, that's a 22, yeah, there's a lot of work here, by the way, there's sizes for the pizzas, we didn't do that, no, right, there are, so the crust and all these things that we hard-coded, we didn't change any of those, uh, coming to those, what I want to talk about today is actually a very interesting topic, <clears throat> so, remember, now we're gonna add chicken, right? But if you keep clicking, these chickens never run out, right? <laughs> you can just go to infinity, just clicking. Not infinity, actually. So there's a number. The then teacher, there's a maximum number. But, uh, but yeah, that's a problem, right? <laughs> the pizza place have a storage of limited chicken portions, right? So if you keep adding, 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 yes, you have to have, you have to run out eventually, right? So we were going to introduce something called the inventory. So the inventory is basically how much chicken you have, how much meat you have, how much onion, how much cheese, etc. And then when you click, you add the cheese pork into your new pizza, you deduct one cheese portion from the inventory. Simple mathematics, right? We taught, we have been taught this since we were kids. Now we have to teach the computers to do it, right? All right. So this topic will open up some concept of programming languages that we need to discuss. Okay. Right? First of all, is the by value and by reference and variables in general. So what are we, what I'm talking about? And the second one 
is the conditions so you need to talk about conditions if statements right if the inventory is ran out same as tall till people tells whoever making them pizza that hey we ran out of cheese go bring some cheese i don't know so there's an if statement right so if the inventory of cheese is zero then you do that message else you keep detecting so yeah you can this is i'm just speaking in a negative language right and this is exactly how you write code in vb.net that's what i how i like vb it's actually very similar to the human language you read the code and you understand it as anyone can read the code and actually understand it while in c-sharp not so much no, c-sharp is like more a machine language in my opinion it's like very machine oriented you know those curly brackets and all this stuff all right let's go back so we're gonna introduce first the by value and by reference what are these things so Let's do that, right? So <clears throat> when you go here, let's go to the load, right, of my function here. I'm gonna do some experiments here. Let's make a space here, and we're gonna write our code here. So let's say I declare a variable of type integer, okay? Not information, integer. And we set that variable to five, all right? What is happening when I execute that? And say, let's say message box I, right? So when I start, we, we, we've done this, guys, right? So this is a form load. So this code will execute when you load the form, when you start your program. Load the form, it's five, right? I said five to I, I message box I. Show me the, show me that value, right? Now what's happening in the background? I don't know why my voice gonna tell you that. I'm dying, guys. Call help. <laughs> okay. okay. Alright. So what happening? Think of this as your think of this as your entire RAM. Alright? That's your RAM. I don't, I don't let me show you my RAM here. I don't know if I can. So my RAM here and this machine is 200. My God, this is the RAM now for you, Sam. What is it? 16 GB. I have 16 GB, but for this machine, for this virtual machine, I think it's I have four. Okay, four GB is a lot, right? So your program takes <clears throat> starts with a few maybe bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, who knows? You know. But let's say this is your program, all right? It's just for the sake of explanation, right? Mother, where is this? Okay, orange, this is your program, okay? This is your pizza bed. Pizza bed space, let's go on it. Pizza, wow. Shit, mother of dragons. Whatever you guys know, this is the, your program space. Okay, I'm not gonna label it. All right. Now, what I wanted actually, I'm gonna. I need to. This is this is very big. Two hundred really. Okay. Yeah, that's much much larger. All right. So what happens that your first var variable? I'm a mess, guys. I'm sorry. Today. Delete. All right. All right. So. <clears throat> You, what you did here in the form load, you declared a variable i. There are a lot of other stuff, but I'm not going to show it, right? But this is the stuff that we did. I can't find the answer to the question. Shut up, Alexa. This is what you get. When, this, this is a faulty product. It just speaks by itself. Stupid Alexa. All right. Nobody called you. All right, so what happens then when you declare a variable? I, can't find the answer to I don't know the what the fuck is wrong with her today. Okay. So, where were we? Fucking Alexa. All right. So when you declare a variable, 
there is a space reserved for you, right? In the memory for in your application memory. And for example, this variable is i, and that's your location, right? So i is this value, and then you put five in that, so i becomes five, right? This is a very important lesson, by the way. Tells you how things are working. So this is what happens, right? So i has a value of five. <clears throat> so what happened if I did this now? Dim j as integer, and then I say j is equal to i. What will happen is that the <clears throat> the program will dimension another variable of type j, and then so that's the steps exactly, right? So it will dimension the j. That's the first thing. By dimension, I mean it will, it will reserve a memory location. Exactly the same memory location. I didn't speak about the sizes now for that memory location. Coming very soon. Okay. It's in basically in bytes, if you have guessed. So j has nothing. This is this statement, right? We jump and we put the value of i, remember, from the right to the left. Right? So put the value of i in j. So what happens? So say, what's the value of a? 5. Put 5 inside j. So that's what happens. Okay? Simple. So, but you know it is, right? This is an integer. These are integers. An integer have values by default. So, if I'm not mistaken, integers are, let's open our calculator, it's 32 bit. Now, guys, I'm not going to explain every single thing, but one byte is 8 bits, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, 8 bits. So, if the first bit is 1, that's the value of 1, right? If the second bit is 1, there's only 1 and zeros, right? So this is 2, this is 1. So think of this as this. This is 1, because this is 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 5, 2 to the, and so on. So 2 to the power 1 is 2, right? So what do you think this is? That's 3, because this is 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 1, because this is the location, right? 1 location. Location number 0, location number 1, location number 2, and so on. So this is 2, number, two to the power 1 plus 1, which is 2 to the power 0, and this will be 3, and so on. So you can guess that this is 2 to the power 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 to the power 7. And 2 to the power 7 is... No, we need the scientific thingy. 2 to the power 7 is, I think, 1 to 8, yeah. So this is 1 to 8, the value of decimal of 1 to 8. That's just, and that's just one byte, right? So one you can put, the maximum number you can put in one byte is actually 255. You can, you can look it up. Right, so if you sum all these values, it will be 255. Just take it for me. You can do it. Do it now if you want. It will be 255. So that's one byte. So you can put in a one byte, all right, in eight bits, all right, you can put 255. But we're talking about 32 bits. That's the integer. Integer has 32 bits. So, so 8 byte. So if it's 8 byte, it takes 256. So if you count the 0. And 2 to the power 32 is what? Let's do that. So integers can carry up to 2 to the power 32, which is this number. Let's copy it. So if you put this here, See? constant expression not representable in type y because let's see let's make minus one hmm doesn't like it 
So this is a very large number in, in the integer itself. So let's make it, so it's definitely it's not 32 bit. Like we just figure out, right? Because you could not put this number, constant expression not irrepresentable in type. That's a very weird error. But but you get the idea, right? I don't think it's a 32 bit, it's much, much less. So let's try 2 to the power 16, maybe. Nah, I don't think this is. This is a very small number. So you keep adding one until. All right. So it, it breaks at some point, but I don't know which number breaks it really. That's really weird. Anyway, this is not our topic. So, but there are limits, right? So, and obviously, maybe it's 2 to the power 24. I don't remember really. Maybe this is the number. It depends from a language to another language. Yeah, I can't. I can't tell, guys. We we need to dedicate another episode for this. But there are maximum. But it's obviously between those, right? So it's not thirty-two bit. It's it's much less because we we put thirty-two bit. We got this error. Okay, not our topic. So we know that each this has a space, but this is not our topic. But our topic is the by, by value and versus by reference. So what happens is that when we said i is equal j or j is equal i, the value of i, <clears throat> the value of i went into j, right? And then it was copied into j. So j has its own location, i is, has its own location. So, so if I message box, Let's do i is equal to i um, j is equal to okay and uh, <clears throat> all right so i this is this will just display the value of i and the value of j, right? I'm gonna try and make this short episode because I'm not really not feeling that well. All right, so i is equal to then, and we said let's do a message. i is equal to five, j is equal to five, right? Because they have the same value. So what happens when I change j to seven? And then display that. So what happens is that I set the value of five to i. I set the value of i to j. I message both; they are the same. And then I change j. So j is now seven. And i, what will i be? To remain in five, right? Because every single one of them now has a his own location. And when you change it, you change the value of that. So that's a very important thing. So why did we talk about this? Because variables like integer, long, double, strings works as a value variable. So if you change, if you assign one, uh, if you create, if you dimension a new one, it's always going to reserve a new memory location for that particular variable right however okay so if you change any value that particular location will change right fair enough makes sense right because every time you declare a variable you reserve a memory location capish all right so what happens when that's our i's and j's, right? So let's just uh, comment those out. All right, so <clears throat> let's declare two pizzas here. Pizza one as pizza equal new pizza. And then I declared 
then pizza 2 as pizza, but this pizza is equal to pizza 1, right? So what I have, I declared two variables now, no two objects, let's call them. Pizza 1 is a new pizza, pizza 2 is pizza 1, right? So I'm going to set pizza 1 and meets portion 200, okay? Can I do that? Oh, I can't do that. Because we set that as read only. All right, let's do. Let's just add a variable here, as for fun. Okay. I'm gonna add a variable here, just for fun. We gotta call it test, and then we're gonna remove it. Right. Uh, test. Not test. <laughs> test. Okay. All right. So what I want to do here is I'm gonna set the pizza one. The test is equal to hundred. Okay. And then I'm gonna say message box pizza one dot test. I'm gonna say <clears throat> pizza one equal this like value let's just call it object all right object one and then object two is equal to pizza two dot test what are you trying to reach Hussein okay what are we trying to reach Soon, my children. Soon, very soon. What am I gonna do, it, man? Obviously, sick. All right. So, what are we doing here? All right. And let's set the default value for the test to be five, right? So, by default, whenever you declare a new object, all right. Whenever you declare a new object pizza one new it will be five the test will be five if you, I change the pizza one test and it's hundred right so according to our theory here well, those two are in separate locations so if I change this and that they should be this, uh, different right let's see what happens booyah what is this they both have the same value that's insane I just changed that, but I, I see that pizza one is hundred. When I when I when I query the value of test in pizza one, it's hundred, which is I changed it. But when I create the value of pizza two, it's also hundred. What happened? Why would I change pizza one? Pizza two changed. That is odd, right? This is called the by reference approach so so let's draw a Picasso here All right so what happens here my friends are when we declared our first pizza pizza one there is let's call it p1 and then we declared p2 nothing is created only let's think of it as just a point all right so small point was created here and a small point was created here but no memory was allocated for those so when we said pizza one when we said equal new pizza new is actually tells the program or application operating system please allocate some memory for me for this variable and set that memory location to this variable. So that's what happened. So what happened is that somewhere here, gotta be somewhere here, right? Let's see here, for example, we created these values and there are a lot of stuff, right? And what happens is that by default it's five, right? The test is 5, but uh, there are other values, correct? 
And what happens is that P1 points to that location. All right, that's the first statement. The second statement, pizza 2, as pizza equal pizza 1. So when we did this with integers, j has created its own location. But p2, in this case, with objects, with classes, it doesn't work this way because it's very expensive to create another location and points to it. So what happens that, guess what? Points to the same location. Yes, this is what happens. So when you set pizza 2 equal to pizza 1, they, the values not be copied. They would just merely point to the same location. So when P1 changed that value to 100, remember that's what we did, right? And then we query P1, which is pointing to this location, tells me 100. And then we query P2 and give me the value of this, and it's also 100 because they both point to the same location. And that's very important, right? So this is by reference. And that's by value. All right, guys. So we explained that. I thought I would have more time to explain the conditions. And we're going to, now we learned that, we are ready to set in the next episode. I'm going to explain the inventory concept, but bear this in mind. When you deal with objects, when you deal with objects and you assign objects to each other, they point to the same location. So be careful with that. When you deal with native variables, they simply create their own location. And the reason is that the pizza itself, the class, the compiler does not know the size of this class. And Obviously, it can calculate it, but it's very hard work to do that. And imagine if you if you create new and you assign them, they will be pointed to the same location. Okay. But question is that what if I want P2 to, to point to another location? It has its own pizza. Simple. Don't do that. Just simply say equal new pizza. This way, these guys will have different values. Let's prove that. Now, we created pizza 1, it's 5, remember? Pizza 2, it's 5. They, they are the same, but they are in different location because we created, we explicitly told the OS to give me two different memory locations for those, each one. So this guy, we changed pizza 1, but we didn't change pizza 2, so we run that, and object 1 is 100, object 2. Two is five. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm very sick. I'm going to see you in the next one. All right, you you stay awesome. I'm going to see you. The next one I'm going to discuss in the inventory conditions, all these nasty stuff, all right? You're going to love it. All right, guys, you stay awesome, and goodbye.